Hello, welcome back. And I'm going to continue today on small room treatment basics. And the last, the last video I did, we talked about treatment in a small uh, room that is boundaried by gypsum board and uh, thinner wall partitions. And I showed you our, our treatment options for that. Now I'm going to talk about treatment options for a small room that is um, that, that is bordered by concrete walls and needing some membranes. So if you look here at my screen, this is actually Storcender Studios that it's on it's you can see the finished version on my gallery page. And uh, this is how we did it. This was just an acoustics only job. And let me hide the beams. There's two beams in there. Whoops, hello. Just a moment. Seven. There we go. Gone. You see the waveguides in the back? We, went, we need a deep trapping because we're, there was a problematic um, uh, axial mode forwards and backwards. So the length axial mode was causing trouble. We, now, ordinarily, what you want to do when you're doing membrane traps, you've got to put them in the middle of the wall wherever possible. And because of that, he needed these diff sorbers for the room just to make it work. So that's what we did. And he has ventilation going on in here, which I'm not sure. I don't think it's shown. No, it's not shown. I told him just cut through the, the guides and put them in however you can. So what, <clears throat> what we did, we got this full of wave guides, wrapped in uh, uh, you know, lightweight, fluffy stuff. We've got the diff sorbers. And this, the, the sonics will go right through them, basically, the base waves, you see. They're open in the back. They're they're they're, they're filled with uh, you know lightweight uh, fiberglass, and then it hits the waveguides, and that breaks it all up in there. These guys are uh, membrane traps, as I showed you in the, the one of the recent videos, and of course we have a cloud trap. So this is a small room. Actually, let me pull up uh, the. The data, where is it? Where is it? Remote calculator. There we go. <clears throat> Let's look at that. Um, he has his room meets Pinello. Fantastic. The minimum RT60 is 0.22 seconds. I mean, sorry, maximum, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, the, the maximum RT60, in other words, it can be lower but not higher. And at 63 hertz, it needs to not be higher than. 27. Uh, he, he has 64 cubic meters or about 2300 cubic feet. Uh, the, the, the mode strength is, is wonderful. There's no doubles, so that's, that's great. He's been having some problems around here and harmonic frequencies there in 30. His room will work down to 30 hertz. And that's where his problem frequency was, 30, 60, 90. And, uh, and we fixed it. Uh, actually, I should, but I can't load a, the REW on this machine, but I'll, let me show you how we did it rather than the results. Perhaps I can show results another time. These are all uh, 20 centimeter or eight inch traps, and they're broadband traps. Because the walls are ever so slightly angled, this will work. We do have a concrete wall over here, but over here we have a a, a, an isolated partition that is gypsum board on both sides and the tracking room. So it's going to get weird anyway with this going on. But um, we, we did a pretty good job here. Now up in this corner, right here there's a beam and it goes to the edge of these uh, individual traps that are hanging on the ceiling. So up front of the beam, what we did, we, we covered it with fabric and had it filled with insulation basically put some rock wool in there and then on top of that fluffy stuff and that made this front corner a big trap at least this deep I think it was about you know 25 30 centimeters and uh, that's <clears throat> that's 10 to about what is it what is 30 <laughs> I think it's I think it's uh, 16 uh, 10 to 16 inches here 
and that made that whole front a trap. Now, below these, these, uh, these, these traps here, we, uh, something else got, got stuck in that layer, but uh, I put a pair of good old space couplers. And there's a viewing window into a booth. This is our, our usual little man in the control room. And I put this little ball in his head because this is about the size from ear to ear. And I can draw ray tracing from ear to wherever and see, see what's going on. Oh, we, I did a plug for his window because it's too far forward. And a lot of you guys build, put windows in that are right in the reflection zone. So we built a plug for the wall, but um, he opted for, what did he opt to do? I forget, you can see in, in his gallery, but uh, it seems to work pretty darn good. Works fine. If, uh, if you do have a window that's far forward, you can use a plug when you're doing critical mixing and open it up when you're tracking. Uh, luckily, if I remember correctly, when we tested it was fine without the plug. So sometimes it can be deceptive. Depends on your, your, your um, dispersion angle of your speakers. Whatever speakers you're using, their dispersion angle and their position. What I calculate the, the distance from is normally like it, as though it were flush mounted. And I try to get everything out of the way as though it were flush mounted so you don't have any reflection in there, right, to the mix position. These little things are great for masking uh, reflections off the console uh, because that can cause some pretty destructive interference. So, and this will help mask any diffraction around edges or, or whatever. And it also at least doubles the absorption of the cloud traps above. So there is an example of a a room that needs membrane traps. Remember, if you use membrane traps, you need to put them at the center of the walls because that's, the, that's, the, that's where things happen the most, just put it simply. Rear wall, front wall, side wall in the center um, or as close as you can get to that. Anyway, um, please subscribe and uh, look for my next one. We'll talk soon.